It does work. Fine little blade. Maybe I'll pick my teeth with it. What's up dudes? So today we're going to take a look at Valerian Steel's show version of Needle. Uh, so as you can tell, it is not a very big sword. Um, obviously if it, uh, if it fits a small girl, uh, it wouldn't be. So someone of a manly size, such as myself, would find it to be quite small. For those of you that don't know, this sword was wielded by Arya Stark of Winterfell. Uh, it was crafted by the uh, their their castle blacksmith um, under direction of her uh, bastard brother, Jon Snow. Um, Arya was a uh, she was kind of like a, a tomboy. Uh, didn't fit in with uh, what, with doing the girly thing, knitting and um, getting all dressed up and boys and all that garbage. She wanted to go and fuck shit up, and who can blame her? It's much cooler being a being a boy, anyhow. Duh. Jon Snow gave her the sword uh, prior to him going off to uh, uh, look over the the big ice wall, and um, you know she she tried teaching herself how to uh, how to use the sword uh, as time progressed, and eventually she got busted with it by her daddy Edard Stark. Um, and, uh, she got him to let her start, uh, being trained on how to properly use the sword. Um, and so fr from there on, she starts, uh, she starts getting better and better with the sword and, uh, eventually starts to whoop a little ass with it. Um, you know, uh, she eventually loses the scabbard. She more or less loses everything. Everything. Oh boy, did she lose all kinds of stuff and people and uh. um. But you know, somehow she managed to keep a hold of the sword. She even lost the damn scabbard, but she kept the sword, and um, you know, uh, it it helped her uh, throughout her travels so far. Whether it was a little fat bastard trying to steal it, or. Um, her getting revenge for um, uh, a friend's death. Uh, Needle has certainly uh, served as the uh, the dot on her exclamation point. I already killed one fat boy. I bet you never killed anyone. I bet you're a liar, but I'm not. I'm good at killing fat boys. I like killing fat boys. She will not let the sword go, and I and I do believe throughout the series. Um, it will be with her to the end. Um, and, uh, <laughs> how could you want anything less? So the blade itself is stainless steel with bronzed fittings and a leather grip. Um, the, uh, the handle itself is, uh, it's taken straight off the, uh, the movie prop. Uh, so a cool little tidbit from Valyrian Steel is that the handle is actually um, kind of kind of bent, kind of crooked here, um, and that's how the actual prop itself was. Um, the blade is false edged. I mean, it's blunt, blunt. There's there's no uh, bones about it. That thing is definitely blunt, um, and there's not really supposed to be a tip to it. And uh, if there was, mine won't have it anyhow, because unfortunately. Looks like mine was dropped whenever it was being shipped by the packaging company, by whoever first put it in the box. Who knows? One thing you might notice about this blade is that it doesn't quite match up to what you see in the show. Um, in the show, the, the blade was a triangular blade. Um, those are actually illegal in some places, and uh, Valyrian Steel decided to uh, decided to make it to where this thing was uh, easier to get distributed around the world, rather than worrying about these and that countries 
not allowing you to uh, have the three inch blades. And it's understandable. Um, I mean, it's kind of like why go for uh, a rate, uh, an R rating whenever you could go for PG-13 and get more people in the movies. Does the rated R sound cooler? Oh, fuck yeah, it does. But uh, the PG-13 is more money. And, you know, sort of the same thing with this, I assume. Um, so, without doing the three-edge blade, uh, they kind of did a little uh, fuller about halfway up the blade and it sort of gives the illusion of a uh, of a three-edge blade um, and then uh, it's it's beveled in the center and it, it does kind of give the look um, it's not an accurate representation obviously but um, it's about as close as you're gonna get now this would not be the first time that a uh, that a sword manufacturer decided to uh, kind of tweak with the uh, the sword a little bit in order to make sure that it was legal in most places that it's going to. You might recall a certain movie where there can only be one, and the Kurgan sword. This big boy right here. Uh, <laughs> This guy uh, was made by United Cutlery, and in order for it to be street legal in the United States, they had to alter the way that it functioned um, because it has the little uh, the little spikes on the guard. Um, in the movie, they were uh, spring loaded, and yeah, yeah. Uh, try try walking past a cop with a spring loaded knife. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see if that don't get you fucked up. Um, so to get around that, um, they, uh, they put in a little switch on the guard so that you can function it by hand. It's not spring loaded, so it's, uh, uh, it's legit, so to speak. Now, if you take a look at the show version of Needle, you'll see that it has a very stark contrast into what uh, George R. R. Martin thought the sword should look like um, the uh, the show version is uh, is is thinner uh, and it's a poking weapon uh, or a thrusting weapon uh, rather than a slashing uh, sword. Um, if you look at the the uh, book version, um, it has a little bit more of a uh, traditional uh, sword silhouette or profile. Um, with a typical cross guard, um, uh, flatter blade, and uh, could actually do a little more uh, cutting and slashing rather than thrusting, only thrusting. Um, so, you know, and it's kind of one of those things, uh, um, you can explain things, uh, you, you can ask two different artists to explain the same thing and they'll come back two different ways. Um, HBO decided to go a different route from what uh, the original author thought it should be, um, and for the for the movie or the, for the TV show at least, I think it probably worked out better uh, in in this regard at least. Um, a, a lot of the show versions of the swords wound up looking retarded compared to what George R. R. Martin thought they should look like, but I think this one this one they got right. This one is appropriate, I think. All right, so let's take a look, uh, up close look of this bad boy. And uh, there you can see the pommel with its little uh, decorations. Looks like a mix between the flying spaghetti monster and a tree, along with some Eye of Sauron looking things. Um, and uh, this has, uh, it has some pretty definitive lines where they uh, where they halved it and glued it together, um, or how that could have just been uh, from the the, the molding, um, and then you can see the curve. Uh, so Valerian Steel said that this was taken from the original prop that it did have a curve, and it sure as heck did. Um, whenever I first saw it, I thought I had something defective. Um, <laughs> Thankfully, it wasn't. Uh, everything was good to go. So, um, 
there you are cool little tidbit then you've got your guard yep and uh, it it's kind of weird uh, but uh, how you hang it you know involves this uh, it's kind of a weird guard um, but you know thankfully the uh, uh, the the placard works out okay to where it's not too much of an issue trying to hang it there we go need all um, So there's needle VS0114 serial number 2. These are serialized. Uh, they're an open edition, so you'll, they'll make them for as long as people want them. But they will be serialized. Um, I was like a fraction of a second too slow and got number 2, which was unfortunate. But uh, number 2 is the lowest... Uh, serial uh, serial number that I have for any sword so I'll take it so now we'll uh, take a closer look here at the blade and uh, like I said here's here's that fuller that starts and then uh, you can see it kind of it kind of gives that um, that look if you look at it from from afar, it looks like another blade, kind of like that triangular blade. So uh, there you go. And then you work your way up, and then you can see where the fuller uh, goes into this beveled area and continues on with that same uh, triangular look. And then we get to the tip of the blade. Now, unfortunately, mine was dropped. I'm a little pissed. But I should send it back and get a different one. But serial number two, oh, it's tough. It's a fucked up sword, but damn. What's a guy to do, right? So you can find these on uh, Valerian Steel's website. I'll put, the, I'll put a link to the uh, website below. Uh, you can get them off of Valerian Steel's website for $190. Uh, they also have a scabbard coming. Um, the scabbard uh, is supposed to come out sometime during the summer uh, of this year, from what I remember. Uh, the scabbard is $150. Um, the scabbard... <laughs> uh, it's it's also a, a huge difference between the scabbard in the show and the scabbard in the book. In the book, um, the scabbard is is gray, and it's uh, uh, I I have the scabbard for the the book version needle, and not gonna lie, it's pretty ugly. But that's that's what it said it was in the book. Uh, they made it true to what the book said. Uh, but dear God, John Snow. What the fuck are you thinking? That thing is hideous. All the best swords have names, you know. Sansa can keep her sewing needles. I've got a needle of my own. So, I hope you liked the video. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, comments, leave them down below. Um, I like I said I'll get out a uh, an update once the scabbard is sent out and then compare the the show scabbard to the uh, book scabbard um, and uh, you know thank you for watching we'll catch you on the next go around.